Hey devils, it's Lurkin Monster High, aka Doom, your host with the most here to bring you a double creature feature, featuring Gulag Skulia and Skelector Elvira. Let's get into it. <laughs> hey angels, it's Lurkin Bratz, aka Dom. I had to remember my username for a moment because I love when I do Monster High things and people are like, some people are shocked, some people are like, oh, okay, like, he likes Monster High. Some people are like, aren't you a Bratz account? And I'm like, I love other dolls too. And if you've been keeping up with the YouTube channel, you know that I do a lot of Monster High reviews whenever I get them. So we got some Monster High dolls here and I've already like semi unboxed them because I've been doing reels with these. And I was really surprised because when I do non brat stuff on my social medias, it, it's a hit or miss. I like to branch out a little bit more these days, and it's been nice, like, refreshing to do not completely brats. Like, I love brats. Like, that's the core of who I am, and, like, the core of, like, what I, I do, really, in terms of doll collecting and this whole journey of social media, but I do love other doll lines, and I do love Monster High, and I'm, I don't want to beat a dead horse, <laughs> but... I love what Monster High, to an extent, has been doing the past few years now with the Skelector releases, but I didn't really get into Skelector or, like, the Mattel creation side until Haunt Couture came about. I remember when I got Haunt Couture Frankie and I really, like, fell in love with them. And from there on, it was, like, very hit or miss for me. I love the first three Haunt Couture dolls, but I did have issues with my Draculaura. If you already know, she had a lip chip and Mattel really couldn't do anything about it and I was really disappointed and then I think Cleo was really cute Laguna I was very disappointed with for um, various reasons especially with quality control and since then I haven't I don't know how much I've ordered off of Mattel creations I kind of like ignored a lot of the releases I was very interested in the Bride of Frankenstein release and I kept looking at it and it didn't sell out yet when I went to go look, but then I was like, you know what? I just don't think it's right. I don't think I really need this release. Part of me kind of wishes I did get it, but part of me was like, you know what? Like, I think it's just not for me. But these other releases, and this got leaked back, I want to say like back in like September, October, maybe a little bit earlier than that, but the Elvira and Chucky Tiffany dolls, like the listings got leaked. And I was super excited. I was really looking forward to them. I already have my Chucky Tiffany dolls. I did a review on them. And I was really pleasantly surprised when I did a reel about the Chucky Tiffany dolls. And it actually did. It performed really well. And not that everything has to perform well. But it feels like reassuring that like I'm in a... I'm doing like everything correctly when everything performs well. And that I did a decent job talking about... Who's emailing me? <laughs> Anyways... It just feels, like, reassuring that, like, yes, like, I'm doing an, an okay job. Because <laughs> I'm not, like, I felt really confident in, like, what I put out. And usually I do. Like, I don't like to put out things that I don't feel super confident in. And if I do, like, I feel like I like the to produce, like, quality content, qu content that I would like to consume. And that's what I like to put out there. So I was happy that that specifically performed well. But regardless, that was... I was surprised I got the Chucky Tiffany set before I got the Elvira set because I was like on top of the Elvira launch and I was like, she didn't come for like months. She came, I want to say some point in May, like, yeah, very like end of May around the time of the Bratz anniversary, which is like May 21st. I think she came in that week and then I had to go visit my boyfriend. So I was away and then my room was pulled apart, so now I'm finally getting to unbox her, and I'm excited. I've been a little nervous, but she does look pretty good. I'm not... I'm not mad at her. I am a little curious about, like, what the hair situation is going to be like, how it's going to, like, look styled, and how I'm going to be able to style it. I don't know how this, like... What is it called? Like, a buffon? A buffon? is like... I don't know how that's, like, put on there, honestly. I've seen some people do tutorials, and it's been very interesting to watch, and they do a really good job at it, but I'm like, how is that on there? But I guess if you don't know, then we can find out together. But I don't want to mess with it too much. But yeah, I do have some, some quips with Elvira, and 
I'm sure a lot of people probably already know what it is, especially, like, it was my same thing with the Tiffany doll, was that the dolls, like, I know that they're more, like, the Tiffany doll was more inspired by rather than a direct recreation of the Tiffany doll, but their breasts, I feel like that those are, like, selling points for those, like, characters, especially Elvira. Like, Elvira's, her chest is, like, a big part of her brand. Like, that's just the way it is. And I love Elvira. Like, Elvira, I've literally, for, like, years, like, I've loved Elvira so much. I remember when I saw Elvira and I watched, like, her movies for the first time, I feel like my life changed. I was, like, 12 years old. And I was, like oh my goodness, like, I want to, like, be like this. Like, I want to be this woman. <laughs> and I feel like a lot of my sense of humor, like, derived from Elvira. So I just, I really love Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. And I also have Gulex Gulia Yelps. And I, this, I don't have a um, Fang, is it called Fang Club membership? But my friend did, and I helped him buy his Gulex Gulia. So he also... Helps me get one as well because he was working, so I ordered it while he was working. So that was very nice of him, so thank you to him for getting me Gulex Ugulia. And I really did love her, like, her design looks really cool. And I think her price was pretty, like, good for what it was. Like, I honestly, I don't remember how much Elvira was. I want to say she was about 60 and I almost want to say Gulia was about 50 to 60 I don't know. Like, if somebody remembers, please let me know. Elvira might have been, like, 70, but they were, like, in decent price ranges, honestly, and I was a little bit shocked because I feel like a lot of these, like, Mattel Creations exclusives, like, the prices can be so zany, especially for the quality that you get, but I will say, like, these are two things that I don't think I fully mind the prices on, but I will say I don't think the quality fully always lives up to the expectation of, like, the price that you're paying, especially when there are Playline dolls on the market that have better quality for less pricing so that's just a matter of the fact but yes we have Elvira and I don't want to rant too much I know I rant a lot I'm sorry but her box is pretty cute I did take her out of the shell so that I could take some pictures and do some reels of her but I do love the inside of the packaging it's really cute we have her dog from the movie and then here's a framed picture of her and her dog I love the detailing and there's like pictures of her in there and just like it's all spooky and if you don't know the fun fact i believe garrett sander the creator of monster high said this on his instagram stories once but or somewhere he said it somewhere was it reddit i don't know but he originally wanted elvira to be the headmistress of monster high in the original like series and the original canon of it all but i think the licensing and everything was too much of an issue so they never went through with it but now that it's like years later and uh, mattel has obviously branched out into doing licensed characters for the monster high brand especially for these collector releases so they have elvira now and i think that is really cool but i think it would have been interesting to see what would have happened with something like that back in like 2010 but it's too late to turn back time. But here's the back of the box. The sides of the box just have like her logo and then there's a stock. I think it's the painted actually, probably the painted sample of her on the side here. We have like the smoke all along the bottom and actually the front cover, as you can see, also has like a smoke, smokiness to it, like a mist on it so that if you put her in the box, it kind of just, it's like this whole like misty thing. And it's pretty cute. And on the back of the box, it says, Avira, Mistress of the Dark. And it says, hello, darling. As the Mistress of the Dark, you know I love giving you glam, gore, and cheap thrills. Well, not too cheap, because mama's got to eat. But my absolute favorite thing to do is curl up with my fellow creatures of the night and catch a great horror flick. And I've got the perfect outfit for a macabre movie night. A ghoulishly glam gla <laughs> clown. <laughs> a glam clown. <laughs> A ghoulishly glam gown with a peekaboo split, cause hey, this is a family show. Paired with a spooky spider stilettos, my signature dagger, and of course, Great Aunt Morgana's magic ring that goes with everything, including eternal damnation. So let's get ready for a night of screams and unpleasant dreams. And it says XX and has Elvira's signature. It says from the makers of Monster High Collector, the standard. 
and I do love the packaging they do for these but I do wish this was some sort of like it was better at closing or maybe like had metal like a metal thing here so that it like could look more neat when you close it or like I don't know maybe be more flexible in the arms here because I do like you know if you're trying to like view the doll like this I do get scared that it's gonna get damaged along here but we are gonna unbox the doll and I don't plan on displaying the box and the doll at the moment I actually built an extra little shelf for where my Funko Pops of Tiffany and Elvira are and I'm gonna put the Monster High Collector dolls right next to them so it's a cute little display and I'll show y'all, I'll probably do it in the reel if anything, but we're just gonna go ahead and we're going to unbox Elvira. I think it's about time. So I guess a little story time while I get the doll out of the box is I've really loved Elvira and I've always wanted a, a doll of her. I've only had the Funko Pop and I, you know what? I probably still could get the Living Dead doll for a decent price. I saw it at a Go Calendar store in the mall, and it was just a little above retail, and I was like, you know what, I can probably wait and order her, but I've never actually gone through and ordered her for some reason. So honestly, I may as well, but there was this one doll, and I, I'll put a picture of it because I have it on my phone, but this was a BJD, and I've never owned one of these before, but they I know that they take a a while to make and like they're expensive to create so in turn they are expensive to you know put on the market <laughs> like they retail for really high prices and this one company I think it, it was a woman actually I think she might have done it by herself but she got the license to the Elvira brand and she did a BJD of Elvira and I'm telling you this doll was stunning like gorgeous like drop dead gorgeous like I was willing to splurge on this doll and I remember when I was working like when I finally was starting to get money I was considering buying her but keep in mind this was like two years after this doll came out the doll came out about 2018 and I went to go on the website it says she's still available but what I've noticed from this seller's website is it hasn't been updated since 2018 and everybody who's placed an order has gone on Facebook and complained that they did not receive their order. So I'm thinking that something might have happened and like, I don't, I hope the person's okay. I don't know like if something happened to them, but it seems like they're just not shipping the orders anymore. Like they forgot to take it down and they've just stopped taking orders, but the website's still up. So they are still taking orders on there. So that... I'm glad I never like actually went to go splurge on it because they were expensive. There was two different sizes. There was a smaller scale, which was around 600. And then the bigger scale was about eight to 900, give or take. And I think for the doll, it would have been worth it. And it came in this really cute coffin case. Like it was so cool. Like I was really, really into it. And first I had seen it online, but then I went to the store and it, I'm forgetting. It's a candy store that used to be on Hollywood Boulevard. And they, it was a really, like, honestly, that whole shop was, like, up my alley because some of it, there was, like, a RuPaul section, like, a RuPaul's Drag Race section. It had all the drag queens. And then this other section was, like, a Goosebumps section and a horror section. But there was a lot of, like, Goosebumps merch. And then there was one, like, section dedicated to Elvira. And I was just like, oh my goodness, like, I feel like I've entered a gay heaven here. And I think since then that shop got closed down. There might be something similar in its place. I'm not 100% sure, but they had the car, I believe, the car from Elvira, the movie, in there. And they had, like, this, all these props and, like, memorabilia. And they also had merchandise. And they had that doll on display. But I wasn't getting her at that time because I wasn't making, like, money like that at the time. If I was, I totally would have been like, yeah, give me that doll. But I just thought the... She was just so, so cool. And I really wish I could get that doll one day. But it almost seems like that would never... That probably would never happen, unfortunately. I want to say the brand... The company's name is called Doll Stories. Wow, her head is, like, really, like, in this box. Oh my goodness. And here she is. But yeah, that was a really cool experience. I, you know, that was a weird year for me, I gotta say. A little bit of a dark year for me, but I think that moment of that year was really cool. So, I would revisit that year, but only for that specific moment. 
But Hollywood Boulevard has changed so much and that was my first time going there in years. And I really was not feeling it. Like it was just really bad. <laughs> okay, so her little like buffon, I think it's called. <laughs> There's like a, here like a bun in the back of her head and then this goes over it. Honestly, that does make sense. I don't know why I didn't think of that. But she's out of the box and I really love how kind of sturdy she feels and I wasn't expecting her to feel so sturdy. Because I feel like with a lot of like G1 Monster High dolls, like even with the Skelectors, they tend to feel like flimsier. But she like feels like very sturdy and like almost like a little bit heavier. Not like heavy heavy, but like heavier. And I, I like the way that she feels in my hands. I love it when a doll feels like nice to hold. Like, I don't know, like it just feels like a, a complete doll in a sense. The doll is cute, but I will say I think that the chest situation is a little disappointing. I do think, I don't know, I'm not a, I think the gown is cute. The gown is cute. It's definitely Elvira. I like how they kind of monster high-ified it a bit. They put the skelets all over it. I do wish, I don't know. I just kind of wish it was slightly different, if I'm being honest. And I don't know if I like the way that it was cut. But it's, what it just felt, oh, it was just a plastic piece. <laughs> But honestly, like, not bad, and it feels better now that it's, like, in my hands. Like, the fabric feels, like, nice and sturdy, whereas, like, in the pictures, I don't know why it just looks a little bit cheaper, but I think it's because of these edges. Honestly, like, not bad. The construction feels pretty solid for this doll. And she has her little dagger here, so if you don't know, Elvira usually wears a dagger, but this is, like, one molded piece. It's, like, one belt. And I thought for some reason the dagger would be removable, but... I guess not. You could, like, pop it out, but it's, like, part of that belt. So that's interesting. And then she has, like, these little snake earrings. Pretty cute. And I do like her face. At first, when I saw her, I was a little hesitant about the face. But I don't know. It's it's really grown on me, and I think since I've had maybe, like, six months <laughs> since I ordered the doll, since I first saw the doll to like really process it, I think it's really grown on me. <laughs> but yeah, she does look pretty cool. I'm digging the face. I do wish the eyes were a little bit more like cat eyes, like a little just a bit more like of a different shape to really emulate like what Elvira looks like. But I do understand that she's like a monster high version and not quite like the actual Elvira. The pumps are cute. I'm digging the heels. They have like a spider web on them. Is there anything on the bottom? Because I know, no, they don't. Sometimes I like to like put things on the bottom, but on the back of this, there's like, it looks like bat wings and there's like a little keyhole. I don't know if that's, I might be misinterpreting that. I don't know. <laughs> but the hair does need some work. The hair, of course, is Saran. And if Mattel does any Mattel Creations dolls with polypropylene, I would question that. I would be upset. But it is Saran, so, like, expected. <laughs> I do need to fix this hair, though. Like, it is bugging me quite a bit. But I think that's expected with most doll releases. But she's pretty cute. I'm feeling her. She does come with a stand. It's a plain Monster High stand. Nothing too special. <laughs> I do wish she maybe came with something else. I don't know. I feel like it would have been really cool if she came with her dog. Like, that would have been, like, a cute accessory. And I'm surprised they didn't do that. And I'm like, why? Like, that just feels like such an, uh, an essential thing. Especially because the dog is on the box. And it, you know, the dog played a, a large role in the movie. The breastplate, okay, I will say. It is a little bit bigger, but it's not big. Like, Elvira big, you know. You see a little bit of cleavage. A little bit of cleavage. But, I don't know. I think they could have gone a little bit more all out for this specific doll especially because Elvira does have a pretty large fan base and it's what she's recognized for she's recognized for her breasts and of course there's a certificate of authenticity and this is pretty standard for Skelector dolls I'll just cut that out I am going to preserve the packaging because it's pretty cool packaging I love all the little details in it, but here it is. It's like a thick cardstock, and it just says like it authentic ha, authenticates <laughs> authenticates that this was 
the doll that it is. In my reel of the Chucky Tiffany set, I kept trying to like do puns and I I was calling it a, a certificate of haunt authenticity, but it I found it so hard to say it like as fast as I had to for the reel because like some people don't understand that making TikToks and reels, there's a lot of like production value in a lot of them. <laughs> Like, sometimes it could take a while, like, to, like, really nail it down. And I had some friends who have, like, tried to make reels and have thought it was easier than it looked. And then they get to it and they're like, oh my goodness, like, how do people do this on a regular basis? And I'm like, it's, it can be very difficult, honestly. I think people underestimate the value of <laughs> the production of a reel. And, like, something I struggle with with making reels, and I think... What I, it's because I like, what I like about YouTube is that I get to just talk, but then I realized as I'm editing videos, I'm like, damn, I talk a lot. But then as I get to like doing reels and stuff, I'm like, okay, I have to be like really fast. I have to really be on it and I can't like film things for too long and expect to get like the whole thing in. Like I have to realize it has to be like snippets of things or it has to just be like one focus and like, you know, fast talking, like, I can't go over a minute, or I can't go over 90 seconds. It's just, like, all these, like, different factors to take into account, but then when I do YouTube, I'm like, I can do whatever I want. I can say whatever I want. I can talk for however long I want, which I do like, but then I'm like, I hope I'm not annoying too many people, but I also, it's my channel, so if you don't like it, you don't have to watch it. <laughs> But I've gotten complaints that maybe I've talked I've talked a little too less. Not like complaints. Usually, there was one person who was kind of rude about it. But there's been some people who are like, "Oh, I like it when you talk a lot." And I'm like, "Oh, okay." It's a it's a validating feeling. Okay, well, I was just cutting like the backs so that I can just pull out the plastic pieces and we can preserve this packaging. Look at that. I do a pretty good job at uh, the Monster High packaging is easier to like preserve as opposed to like the Bratz designer and collector packaging can sometimes just be a pain. It's a pain sometimes to like try to preserve those boxes and I messed up a few times. But yes, I'm just going to store this away. But look at how cute it looks with the whole thing. That just reminded me, I do have a photo idea for Elvira. And I feel like it's kind of late, but I feel like I'll still do it. Moving on to Gulux, Gulia Yelps. I have to say, this was a doll I was like, I need her. No real hesitation. I was like, if I have to buy a membership, I will, but I didn't end up getting it. Ultimately, maybe I will in the future if it's still available. I don't even know. But if not, it's cool. Because I already got the Gulux Gulia that I wanted. And... I really, I love this packaging. I think the packaging design is, like, stellar. I'm loving that it's not, like, a regular Monster High package. I like that the Monster High logo is in the backdrop. And then I love how everything else is really, like, they bring it to the front. So they have the skelet. But it's, like, the Gulia skelet where it has the glasses. And then on the front, I love this font. It's very, like, spooky. And it says Gulux. Gulia Yelps, and it reminds me of, like, it gives me, like, the vibes of, like, the movie 13 Ghosts, or, like, even, like, the, the movies of, like, ghost stories that were coming out around that time, like, the late 90s, early 2000s, like, it gives me those vibes for some reason. I don't know if that was the intention, but I, I was feeling it, and it, it's just, it's a very spooky vibe. I love the way that she's displayed. I almost wouldn't take her out of the package if I just didn't have room to display the whole package, but I will preserve the packaging, of course, and if I ever have the room in the future to, like, leave her in the box and, like, display her in the box, I 100% will. Same with, like, all of my Skelector dolls, really. But here's the back of the box, and we have the sample on the back. And it's, I love how they show, like, the, the spine corset here. Like, I think that's really clever that you get, like, more of a view of, like, those details here. I'm thoroughly impressed that this doll looks as detailed as she is, considering that she's, like, not, like, significantly less in cost compared to, like, the Haunt Couture dolls and some of the Skelector dolls. With the Skelector dolls, I feel like I have to factor in the licensing, like, fees that might come with that. But 
I don't know, like, she seems like a really solid doll compared to her peers, honestly. But yeah, here's the back, there's a description, and it says, The smartest school at Monster High is creeping the halls in a look that's sure to make the ghouls rest in pieces. Gulia Yelps wears a Gulux three-piece ensemble with glam details. A cropped turtleneck with the zombie signature brain print is layered with sheer puff sleeves and paired with a high-gloss jumpsuit with a metallic zipper trim. An exoskeleton corset brings all the drama, while drippy satin ribbon cuffs complement the edgy look. The outfit reaches new heights with thigh-high boots in the signature brain print with a scary cute skeleto. <laughs> Skeleto heel. Dramatic makeup and ghoulish... <laughs> Sorry, the skeleto got me. Dramatic makeup and ghoulish accessories, including glowworm earrings, skeletal crown, and a gravestone purse, complete the look and make Gulia a bone a fied fashion icon. Emphasis on the bone. But yeah, I think we're just gonna go ahead, we're gonna get her open... And it also the side, it says Monster High. I'm loving the branding on this. And then we have her pet here. What's his name? The owl. Sir Hoots a lot. I don't know. It might be that actually. <laughs> and then it says Zombies are Monsters too. Very, very cute. It's like bringing elements of like an edginess in, you know, the, it's bringing that together with her original aesthetics. And I will say the original Ghoulia doll... I really hope one day they consider reproducing that doll. And I thought they would have with the Cree productions, but I don't know. There's been like nothing on that really. And I, I was really shocked because I feel like Cleo, even Deuce, like the Cleo Deuce two pack and the, the first wave Gulia dolls, like I feel like those hold the same legacy as like the main core four of Monster High. So I was just kind of like, are they going to reproduce her? Because I almost bought her at this store and she's gone now. But she was only 50 bucks, and, but she was out of box. And I don't know, like I felt like 50 bucks for that was a lot. And I was like, oh, they'll probably reproduce her. And here we are over a year since Creep Productions happened and they have not reproduced her. But I'm glad we have this Gulux Gulia. She does look really cute. I'm loving this drip here as well. I forgot to mention that detail. And then the background is like brains that also match her fabric boots. I think those are really cute. And I think someone mentioned that these are the first fabric boots that Monster High has done. So that, again, pretty impressive considering like her price point. Okay, I got the plastic pieces out. I have a bunch of plastic ties. Even when I do this over the trash can, like, they end up all over the place. But I guess just to go over, like, the mundane little details first, I have this part out. Pretty easy to get as long as you're ripping everything from the back and snipping everything from the back. And then she does come with a certificate of authenticity. And it's, like, more of, like, a paper, like, a thicker paper, but not, like, a cardstock. And it just certifies that this was... This is the doll that it is, and it was done by Mattel Creations. And I would say, like, it's more of this flimsy type because it's more along the lines of, like, a Barbie signature or a Monster High holiday doll. It's not, like, the same tier as, let's say, like, a Haunt Couture or a Collector doll. But I will say the quality is impressing me a little bit more than the higher tier dolls, which is kind of shocking, so... Here's the doll as it is, but she's wearing her, like, she had her glasses on, and the glasses, I really love. I really love these glasses. And I'm just kind of shocked that this was offered at a lower price point and would be considered, like, a smaller, like, a lower tier than, say, one of those other releases, because I'm, I've, I'm thoroughly impressed by it a bit more than I would be with, like, some of the Skelector dolls and some of the Haunt Couture dolls. It makes me question, like, what? who's making decisions? <laughs> who's making these decisions at Mattel? Face card, stunning, gorgeous. Look at her face. Look at her face. She's, like, perfect to me. I adore her face, and this is the thing, is I've always loved Gulia. Her first release was one of my favorite Monster High dolls. I remember when, and someone mentioned this the other day, that Monster High, and also she does feel sturdy. She feels pretty darn sturdy. 
but someone mentioned on Twitter that Monster High used to be pretty hard to find in stores and that stores didn't order them as much and I agree like I do think there was a point where like people were really trying to hunt down these dolls and it was a literal hunt to go find Monster High at like Toys R Us or Walmart or Target specifically in those early years like 2010 to 2012 13 era and I remember that and I always remember it like I always wanted Gulia, and I remember Christmas, I think it was Christmas 2010, and I asked my aunt to order her from eBay, and so we bought her from eBay, but then not too long after, I found her at a Walgreens, ironically, but I really wish I still had that doll, like, I really regret, like, getting rid of a lot of my old dolls back in the day, but too late to turn back time, but I'm, lo I love this doll, actually. I'm like thoroughly shook by this doll and how much I like really enjoy her. The detailing, so this isn't like a real, like it's supposed to look like a zipper, I think, but I do like it though, even though it's not like a real zipper detail. It's like threaded in, it's like sewn in. And then she has like this pleather one piece and I will say it's a little ill-fitting, but not too bad. I think this has been like a topic like all the time is like monster high bodies don't look really good in bodysuits. And this is like technically kind of like a bodysuit, but I love this like top up here. I love the details of it. I love like that brain graphic. I love these sleeves and the sleeves are actually like separate. So like, I'm pretty sure you can like take these off. And then she has these like ribbons on her arms that are like really cute. And then I love the fabric boots and I love how they kind of like fold out to do that like drip here. And then I love this red, I love the reds. And I think this is what I love about Gulia is like the, the blue and red combination always like struck me. And I love these boots. I will say like, okay, the skeleton hands are cute, but for some reason they freak me out just a little bit. Same thing with her like skeleton crown. I mean, it makes sense and I think it's really cool for her, but for some reason it like, it like, oh, like, I don't know, skeletons kind of freak me out to an extent. But the corset is cool, and I love that the corset, like, I love that color of red. I think, like, everything, like, it all complements each other really well. And then she has, like, green earrings, and they're, like, worms. <laughs> and then she has a green handbag, and it says VIP, kind of, like, rest in peace, but VIP. <laughs> and it's, like, a coffin, like a tombstone. And then on the back, it has that graphic that was on the box Ooh. that says zombies are monsters too. And then we have Sir Hootsalot. Is that his name? Is that the pet's name? I don't fully remember. Oh, and the bag does open. It just, it kind of opens in a weird way. <laughs> like it slides out. But I'm really digging this doll. And I also, I love her glasses. They're like this acrylic plastic but there's like a white frame on them but then on the arms you can see the little skelet I don't know if you can make that out fully but you can see the little skelet on the arms there and I think that is just such a neat detail and honestly like I'm loving this doll a little bit more than I did with some of the Honka Tour dolls and I hate to say that because the Honka Tour dolls when you factor in the shipping and handling those were like 90 bucks in US dollars Whereas with her, she was not, like, significantly cheaper, but cheaper than those dolls. She comes with less, though. Don't get me wrong. She doesn't have a diary. She doesn't have, like, a, a fancy box. She doesn't have a fancy certificate or anything like that. But sometimes that doesn't always matter when you can get something that is, like, a quality doll. And, like, I love this design. I do think it is, like, a... It's a bit more of, like, a high fashion for Gulia, And I feel like Gulia doesn't get enough love in like the monster high sphere of things and she does come with a stand so the base is black but everything else is like that acrylic plastic but this part is more plasticky because if you remember with the hot couture dolls oh i don't okay it's a little bit it's a wide it's a wide grip for the waist <laughs> part so just be careful she doesn't like try to like fall out Okay, my phone died, so I don't know where I, le <laughs> where I left off with what I was saying. But I love Gulia, and I'm really happy that I got her. Like, I would have been really sad if I didn't get her, actually. And I feel like she will look really cute next to the Honkator dolls, but I feel like I'll display her on her own for now. But 
really gorgeous doll. I love to see Gulia getting some love. These glasses are going to bother me, so I'm going to have to find a way to really tuck them in. But overall, pretty good doll releases from the Monster High collector side of things. Like, I was really skeptical about Elvira at first, but now that I have her in person, I really do enjoy her. And I'm excited to, like, display her and fix her up a bit. Same with Gulia, She's gonna need some fixing, but the hair looks like it'll be relatively easy to fix, and it's all, like, very lovely, lovely Saran. And I love Gulia with Saran. I'm not the biggest fan of Kanekalon. Not that it's a bad hair fiber, but it's not my favorite hair fiber. And it's nice to see Agulia getting some Saran. But yeah, that's it from me. I think I'm thoroughly impressed with these two. I think I've had a generally more positive experience with these than a majority of my Monster High, Skelector, Haunt Couture experiences. About the same level, I think I like enjoy these a little bit more than the Chucky Tiffany dolls. And I hope they don't hear that. Oh my goodness, they're gonna be so mad at me. Are they gonna kill me? Anyways. <laughs> but yeah, I think I I thoroughly enjoy these dolls. Like, I think they are pretty cool dolls. I do wish Elvira had a little bit more to her, not just in like some areas, but also like accessory-wise. For Gulia, I'm pretty I'm pretty impressed, honestly. Like, did not expect her to be this way like such a, a a nice quality doll do i still think the prices are a little bit high yes but i do think for Gulia it was a little bit more worth it than some of the haunt couture drops can't lie there okay i'm having some trouble with the flaps of Gulia's box so that's not fun okay that aside solid dolls i enjoyed them Thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more doll content. Follow me on all socials at Lookin' Brats, hold the G on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. And I will see y'all in the next video. Bye!